hello, hello. How you doing, Apostle Gay? You doing okay? Okay, we're going to go ahead on and get started because I'm not going to prolong the time. But this is a midweek uh, chit chat, a midweek uh, nugget of encouragement. And so for the month of June, I've been talking about blessings, apostles. I've been talking about growing pains. I've been talking about dealing with adversity, dealing with trials. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> dealing with trials and tribulations and how we have to embrace it because a lot of times we're not embracing um when we're going through things, I know it don't feel good and I know we don't like it, but can I tell you that's when God is trying to grow us. God is trying to mature us. And so today we're going to talk about it's okay to start over because a lot of times when we're going through things, blessings, woman of God, blessings, blessings, blessings. A lot of times when we're going through things, especially when it hurts, when we don't like it, a lot of times we get stuck in those cycles and so even that's just like even part that even about with me with my i cut my hair off because even there were some things i was dealing with with my hair and i said you know what i want a fresh start i want to start over so guess what i did i shaved it all completely off and so what you see is um uh my hair growing back in the matter of a couple months but can i tell you change is good because guess what when I cut my hair off it was so liberating because I said you know what I want to start over I want to cut off everything and I just want to start with a new beginning and we got to understand that when we get saved in Christ he wants to give us a new beginning and see we got to be willing to let go of the old we got to be willing to let go of the pain let go of the the um the frustrations the disappointments can I tell you this is going to hurt it's gonna hurt you're not gonna like it because can i tell you we know how to be hurt we know how to be rejected we know how to be wounded we know how to be spiritually sick blessings blessings but god want to show us he want us to embrace embrace the diversity embrace the new beginning because there's a new beginning that god want to do in your life and sometimes he allows the affliction he's allowed the painful situations to push us to where we need to be at in him and this is what we need to do we need to allow him to do what he need to do in us because when you are in christ the bible say you are a new creation or those old things have passed away and all things have become new and so guess what if you're going to grow, you got to know how to recognize and you got to know how to let go of the pain. You got to let go of the disappointment. And can I tell you, you're going to need Christ's blessings. You're going to need Christ. Can I tell you, Christ, he lives in our mind. And this is where our mind has to be renewed. This is where you got to begin to get in him. Open up yourself and allow him to heal these areas. Begin to tell him your pains. Tell Tell him what makes you cry. Tell him what makes you sick. Tell him what's wrong with you. This is where we got to get all this stuff that we've been holding in on the inside. The things that you don't want to tell anybody about. Those deep secrets. Those things that you've been holding for years. And you've been wanting to let somebody know. This is where you got to let him know. So that he can be and ask him. I need you to heal me. Heal me where I'm wounded at. Heal me where I'm hurting at heal me. And not only do I need you to heal me, but I want you to wash me. I need you to cleanse me. And I want you to renew me. Do you not know that when you are in Christ, that you we, we're, we're born again? We're born in our thinking. We're born in our thought process. We're, we're born again in the way that we talk. But that, that's why you got to get in that word and you got to begin to learn how, how to um, embrace your new life. Because can I tell you, we just, you just don't get it by just going to church. Church. You just don't get it by being with church people. This is where you're going to have to spend time with him. And he's going to have to show you things that you've been holding on to. You're going to have to let it go. Because if you're going to embrace the new beginning, you know what? You got to let go of the pain. You got to let go of the disappointment. In order for me to embrace where God has taken me to, I had to let go of what was going on with me. My old, what I was dealing with, with my hair, whatever. I said, no, I want a new beginning. 
beginning. Can I tell you a new beginning is scary? Can I tell you a new beginning is a little uncomfortable? Can I tell you, but that's the place where God wants you to be at? Because guess what? When you got a new mind in Christ, it's what he's creating you to be a new creation. He's creating you to see things from his standpoint. He's creating you where you can look through his lenses and no longer through your lenses. So in your household, it may look chaotic to you, but he said that if he said, if you keep your mind on me, I keep you in perfect peace so you can have chaos all around you, but you can have peace in him. See, that's what this new beginning is about, that you got to see it in your mind. You got to see it in your thought process, because if you can't see it in your thought process, guess what? You're going to have a hard time seeing it in the natural. And this is why we're going to have to, we're going to have to allow him. We're going to have to become one with him. We're going to have to get back to cultivating that relationship. This is where you got to look back at at your past mistakes and say, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong in this relationship? What did I do wrong in the marriage? What did I do wrong on my job? What did I do wrong with my children? What did I do wrong? See, this is where you got to reflect and you got to begin to say, what did I do wrong? Because guess what? If you're not looking back at what you did wrong, you're going to mess up again when you're going forward. And I don't know about you. I, I, I can't be like the children of Israel a two week journey taking 40 years. It's because we're not learning from our mistakes. We got to know that it's okay. Even though I know we don't like change. I know that you know what change make us have to let go. Change make us have to accept what we got, what we messed up, but change is good. It's okay to recognize, Hey, I messed up. Hey, I made some bad choices. Hey, I shouldn't have did this. I shouldn't have got this car right now. I shouldn't have got this car house right now. Change is okay because it's teaching you how to learn from your mistakes. And this is where you got to begin to say, God, what it is that I'm supposed to be learning in this situation. You got to ask him what it is that I should get out of this because I know that you allowing me to be in this for a reason. And so it's very important that I got to get it. I got to go back and I got to reassess my issues because guess what? If you don't know what you messed up, you got to know your part where you messed up at because if you go into the new relationship and you don't know what you did, you're going to take that old bag, that old baggage and you're going to take it into the new relationship and see, and this is where we got to begin to say, okay, I got to sit back because sometimes we're going from relationship from relationship when you got to stay, you got to, you got to get healed yourself. You got to begin to love yourself because a lot of times we put in too much energy where we want people to make us happy. We want people to do so many things for us when it's really your responsibility to make you happy. And see, and this is where we got to come back and we got to say, God, I need you to show me me. Show me what's wrong with me. How come I keep looking for somebody to make me happy? How come I keep looking for somebody to do what I want them to do? And when I feel like they don't do what I, they, I want them to do, I'm unhappy. No, that means you got to come back. You got to pull back and you got to reevaluate what are you doing. Because too many times we focus on what people did to us, but we don't focus on what did we do to ourselves. Because a lot of times we're doing things to ourselves that are harmful. We're doing things to ourselves that are dangerous. Because can I tell you, I did the same thing. I know I would get braids after braids, and I know I needed a break from getting braids, but I would keep on getting braids after braids when I know that it would put a lot of stress on my hair. And so a lot of times I did things. And I had to go back and say, you know what? I brought this on myself. And if we're going to grow, we got to know how to take responsibility. If you're going to start over, you got to take responsibility for where you messed up. You got to take responsibility and say, you know what? I wasn't a good steward of my money. No, I didn't take good care of my health. No, I did not value the relationship. No, I did not do my part. No, I did not study. That's how come I didn't do good in class. No, I didn't do good when I talked the message because I didn't 
didn't study. I did not prepare myself because see, this is where we got to go back and look at what are we're doing. We got to stop blaming other people for our faults. We got to begin to take the responsibility and say, you know what? It was my choice. I should not have done that. And this is what we got. to. This is a little nugget that, you know, it's okay. It's okay that you got to start over. It's okay that you got to move. It's okay that you got to go get a new car. It's okay that you got to go to this new place. It's okay. You got to take a deep breath and know that it's okay. Yeah, you feel a little different, but guess what? It's going to teach you how to depend on God now. It's going to teach you how to ask Holy Spirit. I need you to show me. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. And see, a lot of times, we're leaving Holy Spirit out. We're not asking Him. We're not saying, is this the person I should date? Is this the person I should marry? Is this the job I should take? Is this where I, you want me to be? So this is where you got to begin to understand that when you're in a relationship with Him, you should talk to Him him before you talk to anybody before you let anything come out of your mouth you should talk to him can I tell you before I cut out my hair I asked him I said Holy Spirit what do I need to do and he put it on my spirit start it all over cut it all off because I'm telling you my I had shaved it all off like on my skin and I said you know what and I'm loving me I said I'm loving me this is part, what's delivered me from me is about that I'm realizing that I'm not going to be stuck on an old paradigm of how things used to be, but I'm embracing, I'm getting ready to turn 44 and I'm embracing getting older, I'm embracing getting wiser, I'm embracing learning from my mistakes, I'm embracing that I'm walking in this new place and I'm not going to let my past failures mess with me because I'm learning from my past failures. I'm willing to say, you know what, let me go back, let me see what did I do wrong, what did I do and I'm having a conversation with myself I'm turning off the radio. I'm turning off the music. And I'm saying, Holy Spirit, show me. What show me about me? Because can I tell you, when you start over, you begin to start learning a lot of things about yourself. You know, I learned that you know what you can be an impulsive shopper. You just see something and you just get it. And see, a lot of times somebody was no, I'm not an impulsive shopper. When really, I really was. And so this is why I'm saying this is where we got to begin to step back and let God do what He need to do with us. And then you begin to uh, uh, um, make new declarations for yourself. Things where you want to see your yourself at, you begin to speak it over yourself daily. Begin to say, you know what? I'm walking in a new place. I'm walking in a place where I'm comfortable in my own skin. Regardless whether or not you like it or not, but I love it. And you gotta know that if you gonna start over, everybody is not gonna like it that you're starting over. Everybody is not gonna like the new you. Everybody is not gonna like what you saying, what you doing, how you look. But you gotta love it. You got to be in love with the new thing that God is doing on the inside of you because part of deliverance is you got to understand you can't make everybody happy. You got to understand this is your relationship about you and about your God and how he's healing those old wounds. He's healing those old insecure areas. Those areas on the inside of you where we used to hide. We used to pretend or we want people to like us or we want everybody to accept us but we got to come to understand everybody would not accept us. Everybody is not going to like us. Everybody is not going to appreciate us, but guess what? It's okay. I have made up my mind. I'm okay with who have to walk away. I'm okay with whoever don't like it. I'm okay with those who don't understand it because this is something that God is doing with me. And so I'm understanding even when he put people in my life to give me constructive criticism, you ought to be able to accept the constructive criticism because if you want to move forward, you need somebody else who can see some things about you that you don't see, especially when you ask some people for their guidance and you ask them for their wisdom because you value that person. You you appreciate that person and you begin to ask them some things. We got to be willing to accept constructive criticism and we got to stop being offended when you hear the truth. I was talking to one of my kids and they were getting to tell me some things about me that was in my past and you know what? It made me feel some kind of way but I had to tell myself it's the truth. It's the truth and I got to accept that I don't like it. I'm not like this now. 
now, but I wanted to hear what did my child think about a situation. And can I tell you, so when you starting over, you got to be willing to hear about your mistakes, even things that you did not see. You got to be willing to get some feedback and say, what are your thoughts? How, how do you think I did this? How did you feel when I said this to you? You got to be willing to hear a concrete criticism about you and stop being offended because a lot of times that's a sign of immaturity that we can't have we can't uh stand somebody telling us the truth about us and a lot of times people are not interested in growing uh inwardly they want to grow in materialistic things i don't want to just grow in materialistic things but i want my soul to prosper and i want to make healthy decisions i want to be in healthy relationships and therefore so if i'm in a healthy relationship i can begin to tell somebody what they're doing that i don't like i can begin to truly tell them how I feel and they can begin to tell me the same things vice versa why because I'm starting over because in the old relationship we just be so happy to be in a relationship and we don't say anything and we just let things go and this could be in a relationship in any facet co-workers church members personal relationships friends uh, lovers but you got to be willing to, to tell the truth and so a lot of times we got to stop uh, trying to hold on to people when you're in a relationship relationship with somebody and you don't tell them how you feel or you you just taking everything from them because you don't want to start over you got to know that it's okay to start over you got to know that starting over is good it's refreshing you know it's giving you a time to analyze your mistakes it gives you a time to really own up to your mistakes and a lot of times we don't want to own up to our mistakes we want to act like it's not there. Can I tell you that's a spirit, you know, that's a lying spirit. Well, you, oh, no, I'm fine. Oh, no, I don't see what you, no, no, no. We got to be honest with ourselves because I find out people don't be honest with themselves. They lie to themselves. And then you expect another person to be in a relationship with you. And you telling them to be honest with you and you not even honest with you. You got to be honest. I don't like myself. You got to be honest that you know what? I don't want, I don't love myself. I don't take care of myself like I need to. No. I got to be honest because I understand if I don't take care of me, how in the world can I take care of you? How can I love you if I don't love me? And see, and this is why I say starting over means I'm, I don't care if you're 50 years old. Like I said, I'm 44 years old. I'm, I'm getting ready to be 44, but I'm telling you, God is blowing my mind with starting over. I'm learning so much about myself. I'm learning some things that I would normally be quiet about. No, it's some things that I'm going to let you know how I feel. And I, I'm not being that. I'm, I'm all I'm going to say whatever I need to say in love, but I'm keeping a lot of stuff how I feel. People who I'm in a relationship with, I'm letting them know because you got to understand if you're going to ha have a healthy relationship, you're going to have to communicate. And a lot of times our relationships are failing because we don't communicate. We want to communicate when everything is, uh, when, we're, when we're mad and when we're upset, but when everything is good, you're not telling that person what bothers you. You're not telling that person what getting on your nerves. You're not telling that person what you want. And a lot of times we're upset with people because we feel like they not giving us what we want. And I feel like a lot of times if we talk, a lot of relationships, if you really heard how that person thought about you or you really begin to share, you'll begin to find out that you wouldn't even be in those kind of relationships because a lot of times we don't talk to people and we don't really tell people how we feel. But see, now that now I'm at a place where I'm comfortable in my own skin and I'm loving me and I'm fine with those who don't want to love me and those who don't care to love me it's their choice and we gotta come in we gotta make up our mind and tell ourselves that because if a person don't see your value you gotta understand I'm not gonna try to convince you of my value I'm not gonna try to convince you that I can be an asset to you because you gotta be able to know who you are and a lot of times especially us as women we gotta know who we are you gotta know your identity in Christ he said that you know what he said uh 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 I know how many hairs on your head. He said that you was beautiful and you were wonderfully made. He already built us up. And when we begin to believe it, we when we begin to saturate ourselves in the word of God, we will not be moved by jealousy, envy, all kind of name calling. When people say stuff because you'll say, hey, you're not talking to me because you know what? My father says I'm beautiful. My father say I'm beautiful and I'm wonderfully made. So therefore, I don't have to stoop down to your level to try to get back at you 
you because you call me out of my name. No, because what you call me, you, you're not even, I'm not even going to respond to that because that, we're not even on the same level. And so my thing is, well, when you start over, you learn learning new habits. You learn a new way of talking. You learn a new way of thinking. That's why the Bible say in Isaiah, um, Ezekiel 36, he said that I'm going to give you a new heart. He said, when I give you a new heart, he said, I'm going to give you a new heart and I'm going to put a new spirit within you and I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. He said, I will place my spirit within you and call you to follow my statue and carefully observe my ordinance. Because see, when God gives you a new heart, you look at that old stuff and you can recognize, you know what, that place I didn't love myself. No, that place right there, I wouldn't treat myself. I didn't know my value. See, it's when you can begin to look at yourself and know that you know what, I was dealing with some things, and guess what? I had to go through that phase, but now I know who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm embracing who I am, blessings. And so you got to begin to say, you know what? It's okay to start over. I got a new heart. That word heart in the Bible means a new way of thinking, a new way of talking, a new way of believing. Can I tell you, everybody may not see what you see. And again, I'm stressing, it's okay when they don't see what you see, when they don't understand what you understand. Stand because this is something God is doing in you and not them. And so a lot of times we got to embrace what God is doing in us, even when other people may not understand. Your family members may not understand. Your loved ones, your co-workers, your church members, they may not understand. But you got to embrace the new beginning. You got to embrace it and you got to walk in it because God got you at a place where it may feel, you may feel like you're alone because he's dealing with that part of you where you've been a people pleaser where he want to teach you how to love yourself he want to teach you that it's okay it's okay to learn to spend time i go walking by myself i go take myself out to lunch i go take myself out to dinner and i enjoy myself it ain't because i'm mad at my husband no it's because i'm loving me because i'm learning to enjoy me because we got to begin to know to start over because a lot of times we grew up uh uh, uh hurt and wounded and and, 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 and feeling all kind of issues but then a lot of times we take this stuff we bring it with us in our adult relationships. And then we wonder why in the church we're so wounded. That's why we do deliver me from me. Because you can look pretty. You can have on some nice clothes and still be wounded. You, it, it don't matter what you have. It don't stop you from being wounded and being hurt. This is where you got to know within yourself. And you can say, you know what? You can look at your own self in the eyes and say, hey, I'm hurt. You can look at your own self in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm dealing with some things. But a lot of times we are overlooking and we'll try to fix it up with materialistic things when God is saying no I want you to start over and I want you to embrace yourself I want you to embrace that I live within you and you got to know that you are important you are somebody because the spirit of God lives within you if he lives within you you got to know that you are important you got to know your value because you carry the spirit of God you carry you're, you're a glory carrier carrier you're carrying his glory with you everywhere you go and so when a man and a woman don't understand you when they can't accept you you got to understand that they rejecting the God on the inside of you and so if they rejecting the God on the inside of you you got to understand that that's not the person who you need to be keeping your company with you need to understand to keep your company with people who understand who you are and people who going in that same direction that you going in and so a lot of times we trying to convince people to know who we we are knowing this. See, I, I don't have to convince people who I am because those who know who they are, they're going to be able to connect with me. They're going to begin to know. And so you got to know who you are and stop trying to get people to know you, trying to get people to like you trying to get people to understand you because people will not understand you because they don't understand what God is doing on the inside of you and see this is where I understand what God will have us to be alone because he wants you to start paying attention to the thoughts he wants you to start paying attention to when he's talking to you so when he's showing you you need to cut away from that relationship that this person don't mean you any good because they're so negative they're putting negative in your spirit he'll tell you you need to stay away from this person right here because see they're trying to have you going out of your 
your means. They're always trying to get you to spend. They're always trying to get you to buy. See, he will begin to show you. He'll begin to let you know, no, they're not. They're, they're, this person is not good for you because, see, where you at and where, you, where you're going, they don't want to go. They're comfortable where they at, and so they're trying to pull you back. And see, and when we're starting over, you God is going to show you what's in your past and what's in your present that needs to be changed. And this is why a lot of times we don't have time to be talking in groups with people and how come you can't do this? How come? No, because he's trying to open up your ears that you will hear his voice. This will hear tell you don't eat today. I want you to fast. This is a periodic fast. You wake up and he say don't fast. I'm mean, here to tell you don't eat because he wants to show you. He wants to bring some clarity. He want to give you another level of obedience. He want to teach you how to obey him that God don't have to tell you two weeks that you about to go on a fast. He tell you the moment you get up and say I want you to fast. See it's another level of obedience. This is where God is calling us because with this new heart you can't keep going by how you used to be. You know what that what you used to do six months ago what you was doing three months ago. No God is calling us to go into a new place and that's why he said now it, it, it's time to start over this relationship and I want the relationship to start off rock solid. I want you to be secure in me so therefore when things go wrong in your life I want you to be comfortable to come to me because a lot of times we comfortable we'll call the pastor we'll call our friend and he said no I want you to come to me Come to me first. Run it through me. Because a lot of times we're running it through God after stuff happens. And when it fell in the part, then now we're praying to God. And God said, if you would have told me ahead of time, I would have told you that wasn't the person you should have did that with. That wasn't the deal you should have did. I would have told you to wait. This is not the timing. But see, a lot of times we're not we're not looking at what we're doing. We're just being quick. The Bible tells us not to be anxious for anything. This is the time that you got to be you got you you you, you got to you got to be still even sometimes when you get ready to pray you may you may God may tell you don't say nothing he just may say i want you in my presence there's plenty of times i get ready to pray and then i just have my instrumental music playing and he don't say nothing but i feel the presence of god with me and so he just i just want to spend time with you i just want you to bask in my presence and see this is where god is doing something new in us and so he's trying to tear down them old patterns, those old things we learned, because he's trying to bring us into a new place, a new place in him, a new glory, a new understanding, a new comprehension. He want to let us know some things that he normally could not uh, tell us because we were so busy. And so this is why you, if you find yourself being isolated, you find yourself like he cut you off. He began to tell me, I'm cutting my people off because I'm giving them an upgrade. I'm giving them a start over in the relationship with me. He said, because I'm tearing away the religious ways. I'm tearing away those old doctrines. He said, but I'm giving you the freshing. I think that's what Minister Keisha was just saying. A refreshing word that even when you get ready to read, it, it instantly starts speaking to your now. It instantly starts ministering to you now. And this is what he wants to do with us. He want to do a work on the inside of us. But if you too busy going how you always going, you're missing God. This is where God want to cultivate something new in you. And there's something in you where he just wake you up. He used to wake you up at five, but now he start waking you up at two. It's something new that he's doing. And you got to be able to go with the glory cloud. That's why the Bible says he was a cloud by day and he was a fire by night. And so you got to know that it's okay. Because guess what? God has given us new graces and he's given us new mercies every day. And so let him heal those areas in your mind. Begin to close your eyes and focus. He began to give me some exercises I want to share with you all every day on some things what you've been believing God to do say for instance you've been believing God to heal you so every day spend about 10 to 15 minutes what do healing look like in your mind and say God I'm giving you permission to heal this in my mind when this happened to me when they said this to me see it in your mind see him healing you if you've been believing God for that house every day for 10 to 15 minutes see yourself in that new house see yourself in that new car 
what are you doing? Because the Bible says that when you are in Christ, you're, you're a new creation. You got to understand that he's looking for that creativity. The Bible says the earth is moaning and groaning for the sons of God to manifest. We got to start manifesting. How do you manifest? It's going to start manifesting in your mind first before you see it in the natural. So you got to first now connect with the king on the inside of you. And so now you got to re-image what you see in the natural and re-image it with it. What's in your mind to see what the father, how the father sees the situation? So you seeing yourself in the house, you seeing yourself married, you seeing yourself in your new business, you seeing yourself in your church, whatever that your, uh, whatever you believe in God for. You got to see it and run it through the Father and let Him see it. Let Him know what it is that you're talking about. Because what you're doing is re-imaging. Because what you're doing, you're moving those old pictures, those old images that you saw in your mind and that what you thought. And now you're taking them down and you're putting up something new. Now you're giving God permission to do something new in your life. And a lot of times the church have not taught of this because we just think He's going to do it. No, you got to prepare yourself for this. The miracles just don't come. You got to prepare yourself. I'm a nurse and we had this one patient. And I'm going to close. He uh, was in an accident and he couldn't walk. And he started walking. And the doctor said that he wasn't going to never walk. And he was a believer. And I began to ask him. I said, how did you start walking? He said, every day. He said he would see himself lifting up his legs. He would see himself walking and he would visualize it in his mind. He said he did that every day. And he said he'll look at his leg and nothing never happened. He said, but his parents kept telling him, you keep on believing. You keep on speaking. The more he kept on believing, the more he kept on speaking, he saw it manifest. And the young man now, he walks and do everything when the doctors told him that he would never walk. And so I have heard testimony after testimony. That's why we got to begin to allow the spirit of God to renew your mind. You got to be born again, not born again by giving the preacher your hand, but born again in your thinking, born again in your imagination. That's why you got to be careful what you watching on TV. That's why you got to be careful what you putting in your ear gates. That's why you got to be careful what you watching, what you're speaking, what you putting in your heart. Because guess what? You are a co-creator with Christ. Christ began to create what we pray. He began, he, the angels begin to create what we speak because when we speak, they don't hear us. They hear the voice of our father. That's why we got to understand. You got to start over and let go of them old paradigms, those old false doctrines, those old things that we learned that are unfruitful. You've been doing it and you know it have not helped you. So that's an indication that something is wrong. I don't know about you, but I'm into the manifestation. I'm into the fruit. And guess what? God don't care about numbers. I have seen God do less with, do more with less numbers than I've seen him do with more numbers. So that's how come I know it works with well, when you speak it and your words begin to match what you see in your spirit, man, and you begin to see it in your mind, you begin to see the, the power of God manifest. That's how Mary carried Jesus. The word was spoken to her and she carried him in the womb of her mind. Do you not know that your mind is a womb and you got to be able to hold the word. You got to be able to hold that thing what he promised you and you got to be able to see it every day. See it and believe it and to thank him for it. And because when you do this, you will see the power of God manifest. So this is today nugget. It's okay to start over. Don't get mad. Don't get upset. But start over. Regardless of how it looks, people may not understand you, but do what you got to do and know that this is your season. I pray that something I said to you was a blessing, and I pray that it encouraged you. I will see you all Thursday on Deliver Me From Me. This is Apostle Elisa Biggers, and I'm signing out. You all be blessed.